is ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial yeah, capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello and welcome to Cool TV Primetime News. I'm Nifemi Oguntoye in our major story. Unknown gunman attacked police station in Kogi State with dynamite in an attempt to loot the armory. Also in this program, security forces investigate alleged killing of Boko Haram leader Abubakar Shikau in Konduga battle. Chief Justice of Nigeria, Nigeria by Association press for quick dispensation of justice as a new legal year begins. And outside Nigeria, Ukraine forces set to withdraw heavy weaponry away from separatist rebel lines in the east. Again tonight in Ajaokuta local government of Kogi State, where unknown gunmen have attacked Adogo police station with dynamite in an attempt to loot the armory. They were, however, repelled by policemen on duty. The attempt by the hoodlums to cut away arms was aborted as the police successfully evacuated the armory from the station. The attack, which was carried out on Sunday with heavy dynamite, set the building on fire, according to a statement by the Force Public Relations Officer Emmanuel Chuku on Monday in Abuja. The police says no casualty was recorded by the men on duty, while some of the hoodlums escaped with bullet wounds. The police added that the area has been reinforced while frantic efforts are ongoing to track down the fleeing gunmen. The police appealed to members of the public to report anyone seen with bullet wound to the nearby police station to other or other security agencies. Meanwhile, the security sources confirmed to Court TV News in Abuja that the authorities are investigating the alleged killing of Boko Haram leader Abu Bakr Shekau in a battle. Reports had filtered out from Bonu State at the weekend that one of the cops is recovered during one of the battles for Kodunga uh, looked like the Boko Haram leader. But a senior security personnel who doesn't want to be identified has now acknowledged that a top insurgent commander was shot and killed at Kodunga on the outskirts of Maduguri. He added that the features of the terror leader are being compared with the recovered cops to determine whether he is the same that had been appearing on videos. The Department of State Security had always insisted that the Shekau seen in recent videos is an imposter. It claimed that the real Shekau was mortally wounded in battle at least one year ago. Also, Nigerian military has denied reports of a cross-border raid by Cameroon military in any part of the country. There have been reports that Cameroon had bombarded part of the country during which Boko Haram leader Abu Bakr Shekau was allegedly killed. But the defense headquarters on Monday used its Twitter handle to dismiss the claims. It insisted that all operations in Koduga and the border part of the country are by Nigerian troops. The military has meanwhile revealed that 10 Boko Haram members have surrendered to troops in Kawuri. This comes after 
uh, the day after five incidents turned themselves in alongside their weapons at Kodunga. Defense headquarters say the insurgents are in custody for necessary debriefing. Away from that now, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar is convinced that the Jonathan administration has not done enough to ensure a quick end to the war on insurgency. Speaking at the recent interactive media session in Abuja, the chieftain of the All Progressives Congress recalled that the Obasanjo administration smashed a similar group within a few weeks. I don't believe as a country we have done enough to secure uh, this country. This bunch of insurgents have been operating for nearly four or five years now. And knowing Nigeria, we used to pride ourselves with one of the best armed forces in this country. I really don't know where things have gone wrong. Is it the armed forces? Is it the political leadership? I just can't believe what is happening. Honestly, I am not in a position to explain this because I'm not in government. I don't know what is, but I don't believe this is a situation that Nigeria would not have dealt a very, very fatal blow within three to six months. Because I remember when we were in office, such a group that wanted to emerge in Yobe, we smashed that group within a couple of weeks, completely that such a group should be allowed four or five years operating in this country and then uh, saying they have even occupied some parts of the country and hosting flag and nobody is doing anything. Uh, please help me ask. Scores of half-naked women on Monday blocked the convoy of the Kaduna State Governor Ramalan Yero at Fadan Kashi in southern Kaduna. The also heard objects at the governor's convoy when he visited the area to commiserate with the residents on recent attack on some communities in the area. The women were angry that after at least seven attacks on the villages in recent times, the governor was now visiting few weeks to primary elections. Eyewitnesses told court even news that an embarrassed Yero called on the people to be patient and be peace abiding in a brief remark before returning to Kaduna. Meanwhile, the Christian Association of Nigeria claims that over 300 people were killed in recent times in the area. Khan blamed the killings on terrorists in a letter handed to Governor Yero at the palace of the district head. The Christian body urged the governor to take necessary steps to stop constant attack on the largely Christian community. In spite of pressure to seek reprieve for 12 soldiers sentenced to death for mutiny, Chairman Senate Committee on Defense is not prepared to raise anyone's hopes. Judge Sekibo told journalists in Abuja that he is not surprised that the soldiers were handed the death penalty. But he says members of the Senate Committee would be meeting the military authorities on the issue this week. As prudent as the military is, they cannot just uh, point at somebody as having committed an offense without the man committing the offense. I am aware that they went out to, to investigate whether uh, these soldiers uh, really did commit the offense. And they went to uh, where the offense were committed, carry out investigations, ask questions, and all that. Got even some eyewitnesses to come and talk to them. All that, I, I heard of it. But because I cannot be part of that panel, so I, I cannot say I'm a, I'm a high witness, but that is what so far I understand about it. I have not invited the Chief of Defense Staff or Chief of Minister for briefing yet. I'm inviting for uh, further briefing. But what I hold on to is this. We should look at the law. We should look at the Constitution. We should look at the, what is spelled out in the standard code of conduct and operations. And we should look at the relevant punishment that attached to defaulters. So if there are standard codes, or if there is, is inclusive in the law, in the Armed Forces Act, and then somebody violates the law, violates the provision of the act, the punishment spelled out for that purpose will catch up with the person. Supreme Court upholds Willie Obiano's election as governor of Anambra State. I'll find out more on these and other stories after this timeout. Stay with us. This needs precision. Yes! 
got to get her home before her curfew. My dad! Uh-oh, got to get her home fast. If we cut across three streets in three minutes and speed across the market in two, should make it to the... Uh-oh. Can we make it? If we take the stairs at 30 seconds per flight, we just might... Yes! Made it in time. Mission accomplished. Get everyday energy fast with Lucozade Boost. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes, and bleeding from the eyes, ears, and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. You can now watch Core TV News Live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. Welcome back. The Supreme Court has upheld the emergence of Willie Obiano as the duly elected governor of Anambra State in the November 16, 2013 election. A seven-member panel headed by Justice Mahmoud Mohammed wrote the two separate appeals filed by Cruz Ngege of the All Progressives Congress and Tony Woye of the People's Democratic Party lacked merit. Speaking after the judgment, Gardner Obiano's counsel maintained that the outcome was not a surprise. The court uh, endorsed the decisions of both the Court of Appeal and the Tribunal to the effect that um, Chief Obiano, Obiano was duly qualified, and further that um, the um, appellants who were petitioners at the tribunal failed to establish the various acts of non-compliance and irregularities that they alleged. So we are quite happy. Uh, it's uh, consistent with the previous decisions uh, of the Supreme Court, and in that sense, the uh, decision is um, very much acceptable. Legal practitioners say rules of court must be reviewed if delay in dispensation of justice is to be tackled in Nigeria. The call was made at the Supreme Court session to mark the beginning of the 2014-2015 legal year. The Nigeria Bar Association maintained that the review of the rules is necessary, especially now that Nigerian prisons are congested. You For those in the legal profession, Monday marks the beginning of a new legal year in the country. And as usual, a special session was held at the Supreme Court, presided over by the Chief Justice of Nigeria. First, it was time to appraise the previous legal year of 2013-2014 with the aim of setting courts for the new year. Out of 1,288 cases, 146 were disposed while other cases were appealed against. According to the leadership of the Chief Justice, this is a setback for the judiciary. Therefore, attention in the form of an institutionalized pragmatic response must be carried out in several key sectors of the judiciary. Although the necessary actors needed to salvage the situation is not the judiciary's alone. This conscious effort involves members of the legislative arm as well as the executive. The judiciary, however, remains at the forefront of the struggle. The judiciary can thus provide sustainable solutions by implementing an improved court bill criteria and practice good organization and have law officers in the areas of speedy recording of court proceedings. May I also suggest the appointment of more judges and magistrates on merit, 
improved legal criteria and practice, alternative to pretrial det detention, as well as introduction of pretrial victim offender mediation, and most importantly, ensure a speedy dispensation of criminal matters. The leadership of the Nigeria Bar Association also had its say. The causes of delayed in hearing appeals must be addressed urgently. We appreciate the fact that most of our applicant justices are hardworking men and women with a strong sense of purpose. But the situation with the Supreme Court is still in 2014, dealing with 2007 2008 appeals. It's a clear indication to us all that something is just not right. We must review our rules of court to make the processes faster. The Supreme Court and all divisions of the Court of Appeal with full complement of justices should run two full panels regularly to enable them to clear the backlog of appeals. The law should be certain, and even if two panels sit simultaneously and apply the law correctly, the outcome should be the, should be the same. NBA also stressed the need to develop a more accessible case management system and financial autonomy of the judiciary. All NBA chairmen in all the states of the federation shall this week seek audience with state governors in the United States to push strongly for compliance with other provisions of the autonomy of the judiciary. Our next line of action will be dependent on the position of the governors, but let it be known let it be known that the NBA will not compromise on these issues. There is, however, a consensus that restructuring the court system couldn't be coming at a better time, especially now that the 2015 general elections is just a few months away. And while Chief Justice of Nigeria, Aloma Mukhtar, has sworn in 17 new senior advocates of Nigeria, the bait the cut after clearance from the Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee from a list of 132 applicants. Justice Mukhtar sworn in the new senior advocates at a special Supreme Court session to mark the beginning of the 2014-2015 legal year. Senior advocate of Nigeria plays a critical role in the legal profession. He is to assist the courts, attain justice, and in doing so, must espouse an impact impeccable standard of diligence, integrity, discipline, and demonstrate the highest standard of advocacy. A keen understanding of how the law affects the daily lives of people and the promotion of the rule of law to facilitate the fair administration of justice in our great nation should be the primary responsibility of a senior advocate. The Jamaat Nasril Islam in Kaduna wants the National Assembly and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to probe the controversial $9.3 million impounded by the South African authorities. The government had said the money was meant to procure arms, but GNI is not convinced. It said in a statement issued in Kaduna by its Secretary General Khalid Ali Abubakar that the government needs to clear the air on the circumstances surrounding the cash movement. DNI argued that the EFCC needs to do its duties by ensuring that those involved face the wrath of the law. The Islamic body wondered why a presidential debt jet was not used if it was a legitimate business. The People's Democratic Party is to embark on a nationwide tour to showcase its achievements since 1999. This, according to the party spokesman, Olisa Maitu, is to disprove critics' claims of non-performance by PDP government at the center. He said at the news conference in Abuja that the party is prepared to prove uh, its performance in governance at all levels. Has mounted a negative campaign asking what the PDP has done in the last 15 years. Many of them have also queried the rationale behind the unanimous adoption of President Goodluck Jonathan as our sole can presidential candidate for the 2015 general elections. The People's Democratic Party will respond in a unique way. 
in the next couple of months, beginning from Monday, September 22nd, 2014, the People's Democratic, the Publicity Directorate will embark on a comprehensive nationwide PDP performance tour to visit and publicize all projects executed by all PDP elected and appointed officials at the federal, state, and local government levels. The 14th edition of the National Women Conference, organized by the Committee of Wives of Lagos State Officials, with the theme Embracing and Managing Change, had its grand opening of three-day conference at the Eco Hotel and Suits in Lagos on Monday. The event was graced by notable members of the public, among them the Governor of Lagos State, Babatide Fashila, who is the Grand Patron of Koso. August State Governor Ibikuni Amoso, who was the special guest of owner, came in company of his wife and the wife of the late uh, of the Lagos State Governor Abimbola Fashila, who was the chairperson of the committee. Typical of women gatherings, talks ranged from kitchen matters, more women participation in politics. You can see the number of people issues. here. It's because of the skills they learn here and the knowledge they acquire that has impacted on the life of many women. And especially women, that their husbands are in positions of authority. They have been able to be the backbone, to give good advices to their husbands, and to also run programs that enhance whatever their husband is doing. A fantastic one, because information and education is being dispersed and people are taking things on board. So it's a form of capacity building because sometimes it's information that people need. And um, with the caliber of the speakers, uh, the lecturers that they have at this conference, I think that it is very, very impactful. When people understand what changes and when they start to embrace and manage it, and when they are able to move forward in life for them to be able to be successful, and for them to be able to do things that are positive to the society. For those who have decided that politics is their passion and their calling, so be it. All they need to do is learn the rudiments of being a politician, be there, stay there, and be determined to succeed in whatever post they are aspiring to become. The new 64-page e-passport launched recently by the federal government has received more acceptance. While acquiring the new passport in Oshogo, alongside other state officials, Governor Rauf Arabashala commends the initiative of the Nigeria Immigration Service, particularly the target provided for frequent international travelers. Rashid Rashid was at the NIA's office in Oshogo and found in this report. The new 64-page e-passport was launched on the 30th of July by President Dr. Jonathan in Abuja, taking its issuance to states across the country and making Nigerians see the benefits inherent in the new passport, especially for frequent travelers. The Comptroller of the Ocean State Command of the NIS explains that the new passport will have its incurred cost as laid down by the federal government. So acquire the new 64 pages passport recently approved by the government. May I please seize this opportunity to inform the citizens of the states that these reforms have some cost implications so that we should not be surprised concerning the recent hike in passports. The new passport goes for 8,750 naira for minors and senior citizens while Nigerians between the ages of 18 and 60 will pay 22,000 naira. The cost, according to Arik Beshola, is worth it. And I enjoy all Nigerians who are regular and frequent international travelers to come and do the same. Let us encourage the Nigerian Immigration Service by obtaining this new passport that will make regular changing of our passport a thing of the past. So I commend NIS. With the e-passport having additional pages, the Speaker of the Ocean State House of Assembly, Najim Salam, also commends the development. I think this one is far better than what we have before. Why, or what I mean is, uh, for some of us that do travel a lot, or for some people that do travel a lot on their own, now the number of pages we allow them to have 
the, the last point of the passport will be more, be more longer than what we have before. The e-passport, according to Nigeria Immigration Service, will stand a test of time. Rashid Rashid, RTV News, Oshobo. You're watching Cool TV Primetime News. We'll take a break now and return with business news. Stay with us. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes and bleeding from the eyes, ears and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. TV News, expanding your view. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Moremi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. They see you as weak. And I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Hello there, welcome to the World of Business with me, Sabena Izuku. The Minister of Works, Michael Nolomeme, Monday says that the federal government is to take over the reconstruction and expansion of the Lagos Badagri Expressway. The Minister said this in Lagos during the slight presentation of works on the Oshodi Apapa Expressway by Julius Berger, PLC, at the company's office complex in Uchora. He gave the assurance that the project will soon be implemented. The minister said a regional effort will be the best way to handle the project. He has also directed Julius Berger to complete the rehabilitation of Apapa Oshodi Expressway in the next eight weeks. While inspecting the road, rigid pavement was being used to reconstruct the roads to cater for a new load capacity, which was not envisaged when the road was built in the 1970s, he said. He said the completion of the trailer park in Lagos was important as it would accommodate about 500 trucks and decongestor highway. Construction of the light rail line and the bus rapid transit corridor as part of the project to enhance tourism and economic activities. A private bidder, Northwest Consortium Limited, will take over the ownership of the Kaduna Electricity Distribution Company, Ketco of uh, the power holding company of Nigeria on the 6th of October 2014. Managing Director Ketko Idris Mohammed, while addressing journalists in Kaduna State on Monday said, the Northwest Consortium Limited, which merged as the preferred bidder for the company during the privatization exercise last year, had already paid 25% of the share purchase agreed in June last year. The company is expected to complete the remaining 75% by the first week of October to enable it to take over the company fully. After failing to meet two previous deadlines which elapsed last August, the Bureau for Public Enterprise had extended it till October 6, 2014 for the company to pay the remains of 75% of its bid price. 
Naira slipped by 0.27 percent amid a shortage of dollars on the interbank market and higher demand for the global oil prices declined. The Naira closed at 163 Naira, 85 cover to a dollar as compared to 163 Naira, 40 cover on Friday. The Central Bank of Nigeria was selling dollars directly on the interbank market to try to pop up the currency, which had shared almost 3.5% this year. On Monday, the local unit of the Royal Dutch Shell sold an undisclosed amount of dollars which was not enough to support the Naira. The Naira has depreciated substantially on the interbank market in the past two months. The Central Bank of Nigeria, Governor Godwin and Mephiel Anuto, during the last Monetary Policy Committee meeting, citing risk from declines in global oil prices and domestic production. Brent crude oil fell below $98 a barrel on Monday, as slow demands and ample supplies outweighed expectation in all outputs from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. And on the stock market report, equity transaction on the floor of the stock uh, market Nigerian Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The all shares index depreciated by 0.16% to close at 40,984.12 basis points. Market capitalization decrease and closes at 13.53 trillion naira. In all, a total of 344.9 million shares, valued at 4.1 billion naira, were exchanged in 4,663 deals. Report shows that Nestle PLC topped the gainers chart, followed by Seplet Oil, Babco PLC, Julius Burger, and PZ. On the other hand, Unilever topped the losers chart, followed by Dangata Summit, Echo Transnational Incorporated, International Breweries, and Garrity Trust Bank. Meanwhile, here are the top five trades. And that's it on business news. Nifemi Ogunte will be back with the rest of the news. Please stay with us. This is Judiciary Today. The judiciary's function is to interpret the law. The law. The judge in Lagos State is perhaps one of the most comfortable judges in the world. You can't say because we are fighting terrorists or we're fighting terror, then you go about violating people's rights. We're not going to allow that in this country. So I think that's one of the reasons why some so that's lawyers, what lawyers do. I, I didn't do say that what lawyers do. The TV show that brings you in-depth reading and analysis of judicial issues that affect you. For police officers to welcome victims with empathy and not say, what are you wearing? Where did you go? What are you doing at 10 p.m. at night? As of the Nigeria Judiciary remounts of one of their own. He has gone to court on behalf of Nigerian citizens even without taking a cover. It is time for lawyers to take their health very seriously, lawyers and judges. Only on court TV. Sports tonight, Nigeria Football Federation NFF has inaugurated the electoral and appeals committees ahead of the September 30 election into a new board. The committees were inaugurated by NFF President Aminu Megeri, who was represented by Suleiman Yahaya Kwande. He used the occasion to implore the committee members to do their jobs without fear or favor. Respondent, Chairman of the Electoral Committee, Samson Ebome, revealed that forms would go on sale from Monday, September 24. He added that the final list of candidates would emerge on September 25 after screening, while appeals and protests would be considered on Friday, September 26. The Confederation of Football has admitted Nigerian referees for the 2014 Africa Women Championship built for Namibia in October. 
In the list of referees released on the website, 27 referees were picked from 19 African countries to officiate in ninth, the ninth edition of the championship. 12 center referees and 15 assistant referees were named to handle matches at the eight nation continental championship scheduled to hold from october 11 to 25. zambia mali morocco ethiopia senegal kenya ghana and tunisia which have two referees each while cameroon malawi Cote d'Ivoire, angola botswana uganda Benin republic madagascar egypt Burkina Faso and Togo have one referee each in the AWC. Nigeria will be gunning for the seventh title on the coach Edwin Ocon. And to the English Premiership League where Ewan Matters apologized to Manchester United fans after the team's embarrassing 5-3 defeat by Leicester. United looked set for a comfortable win after moving through one ahead at the King Park Stadium on Sunday, but some abject defending in the final half hour allowed Leicester to record their first home win over the Red Devils in 29 years. Rafael and Tyler Blackie both gave away penalties and slack marking allowed Leonardo Lua and Esteban Cambiaso to find the net in a shocking meltdown which cost United the match. Mata was at fault for Jami Verde's goal as a surrendered possession to Richie Delight who cantered up the field to set up the Leicester striker for the host's fourth. And on tennis tonight, Roger Federer has replaced Rafael Nadal in the inaugural International Premier Tennis League lineup. Nadal has withdrawn as he plans to use the off-season to prepare for 2015 after a year interrupted by injuries. Federer was cautious when the event was first announced, but has been confirmed in the Delhi-based India Ace team. The event begins on 28 November and involves current and former players including Andrew Murray, Serena Williams, Peter Sampras and Adre Agassi. Unboxing tonight, Fury was sighted on Monday, this time taking the stage with his mouth taped short. Fury was recently fined $15,000 by the Board of Control for his swearing outburst at press conference back in July. The pair now contest the British and European titles at the Excel Arena, London, on November 29. Fury's trainer Peter said the boxer decided to tone it down a little bit and do the talking in the ring. It's a stunt reminiscent of the time Irish snooker player Mark Allen Tape, uh, Mark Allen rather, Tape's mouth after being fined in 2011 for comments he made that were deemed to have brought the game into disrepute. It's Cool TV Primetime News. I'll be back with other stories. That's after this break. Don't go away. Nigerians continue to Tonight, travel the in city of Lagos points and dog as all level of to you on Be the, the first to know TV news. from the north, south, east, west and around Africa. Our federal high we courses. break the news. We are one Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news breaks. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. Our 24 hour news station. Welcome back. Military says uh, Ukraine military says Ukraine is preparing to withdraw heavy weaponry away from separatist rebel lines in the east. The two sides had agreed to set up a buffer zone in eastern Ukraine more than a fortnight after a shaky ceasefire came into force. Although the truce is still in place, clashes have continued around the cities of Donetsk and Mariupol. More than 3,000 people have died since fighting broke out in the two regions of Donetsk and Lugansk in April. Ukraine's parliament passed a bill last week granting three years self-rule to parts of Donetsk and Lugansk regions, a decision condemned by some MPS as capitulation. Under the terms of the nine-point deal agreed in Belarus, both the pro-Russian rebels and Ukrainian forces are to pull back their heavy artillery 15 kilometers from the line of engagement, creating a 30-kilometer buffer zone. 
And that's where we touch down on the show tonight. On behalf of the entire News Crew production crew, I'm Mifemi Okuntoye, wishing you a pleasant night rest. Thanks for watching.